Hello, Yosemite Church. Thank you for joining me for today's daily devotion. My name is Sonia Bertelli, and I am part of the GROW team here at Yosemite Church. And it's our desire that each of every person would be in a group and that every group would be on mission. So please join us in that and discovering what it is to be a part of a small group community. After this devotional, check out yc.church and just take a look at go to connect and then look for groups and you will see a variety of groups listed there that you could be a, a part of. So please take a look at that after today's devotional. Thanks. Um, we are continuing on through the book of Luke. We're journeying with God and we're in chapter 23. Jesus has been betrayed by his disciple Judas and the uh, religious leaders have uh, unjustly arrested him and accused him of blasphemy. They have beaten him and really have mistreated him. And it is now early morning and um, darkness is still reigning in the hearts of the religious leaders and just kind of what is gonna be happening in these next couple of days. So right now it's Friday morning for Jesus and he has been up all night and he has been um, on trial. And now he's standing be before the political leaders of the time of Rome and of the area of Galilee and uh, he's specifically with Herod. And in verse nine, it says that he, Herod, piled questions, many questions to Jesus, and Jesus did not answer, which was really stood out to me in these verses, because I think given that situation, we could very easily um, handle it differently, right? If we had been mistreated, if we had been falsely accused, if uh, we had been betrayed and up all night, we could have really felt like, hey, this is my chance to tell my side of the story and get some justice. And yet we see that Jesus remains silent. And so how did he do that? How did he do that? How did he keep that thing inside of us that can grow, that flesh part of it that says, I need to be heard because I'm important and my what I have to say is important and they're liars and I'm not. Instead, he remained silent. He calmed that uh, natural tendency of ours to uh, defend ourselves and find justification and things like that. And I really believe that that comes from his relationship with God. Earlier in chapter 22, we saw that Jesus spent time in the garden. He knew that darkness was reigning in the hearts of men, and he knew that he was gonna be taken advantage of and uh, whipped and flogged and crucified. And yet he continued on with the journey that God had for him so that you and I could be redeemed and saved from our sin and be made righteous because of Jesus who is without sin. And um, he did that through a relationship with God. And we saw that as he prayed. Take a look at that again in verse, uh, I'm sorry, chapter 22. And now, as I was reading these few verses, six through 12, it just really stood out to me, that part. And how did he do that? And then God brought to my mind, his spirit brought to my mind, Hebrews 4, 16, which, said, which says, um, let us approach the throne of grace so that we may receive mercy and grace in our hour of need. And I thought that's perfect. That is what God was doing, what Jesus was doing for himself, was reaching for that mercy and grace that his father had for him so that he could go on this journey that he had for us. And so we too can take that gift of mercy and grace during our hour of need and find the strength to do what God would want us to do, not in our own flesh, but in the spirit of God. And I just wanted to share that with you today, just that section for, with you and help you discover that God wants you to lean on him, that he is for you and that he has a plan for your life and that his spirit can work in us as we uh, 
come to him with humility, with a, an idea of realizing that we need help, that we cannot live this life on our own without him. So let me just close with some prayer and we'll bring an end to today's devotional. Uh, thank you, Father, that you are always with us. It can feel at times that we are far away and yet your word tells us that you never leave or forsake us. And then we looked at your word today that said that we can um, come to you in our hour of need and receive your mercy and grace. And that is what I want to pray for all of us as we go forth in this day, that we would be mindful of your presence, that we would be staying connected with you and realizing that you can help us to grow in our relationship with Jesus, that you can help us to grow in the relationship with others, even in the midst of suffering and in our time of need. Thank you for this example of how Jesus lived. Help us to live like him. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.